Hello everyone, this is Ryan King, and welcome to part two of this mushroom tutorial series. So this is part two. In part one, we did all the modeling. We also did some sculpting. So here's where we left off at part one. If you haven't watched part one, just go ahead and watch it. There'll be a link in the video description. Here we are at part two. So we're gonna be finishing up this up. So we're gonna be doing the materials, lighting. Uh, we're gonna be doing uh, some uh, texture painting on this uh, model right here. And then we're gonna be doing a final render and compositing. So let's just start off uh, by doing the texture painting. So I'll press period and just zoom into this object. I'll just select it and then press control I, and then that'll uh, select all the other objects. And then I'll just press H and that'll hide them just that we can't see them. They're still there, but uh, we've just hidden them. And you can press uh, alt H if you wanna uh, unhide them. So. I will just uh, click on this object again, and we're gonna be doing some texture painting. I am gonna be using my drawing tablet for this. If you don't have a like a pad tablet or a screen drawing tablet, you can use a mouse for texture painting. It just might not look quite as good. So I will be using my drawing tablet. So let's get texture painting. Before we texture paint, we're gonna to have to UV unwrap this mesh. And if we tab into edit mode, you can see that this mesh uh, doesn't have very good topology, but we don't really need it to have great topology uh, just because we're gonna be just uh, texturing just the bottom area. So something that I do wanna do though is get rid of some of these vertices. So to do that, I'll click on add modifier and click on decimate. And then I'll just change this uh, value to like 0.3. And then uh, I'll just apply that. And now if we tab into edit mode, you can see it's optimized this mesh and just gotten rid of a bunch of the vertices. So it'll be a lot easier to work with. Um, so we're just gonna do a very uh, quick and dirty UV unwrapping because really all we're gonna be doing is texturing this bottom area. So I'll just press seven for top view and make sure everything is selected. And then I'll press U and I will unwrap this project from view. And so now if we go into UV editing, you can see uh, here's our object, and then here is our UV unwrap. And then if you go to texture painting, uh, you can see we are gonna be able to start texture painting this. But before we start texture painting, we're gonna need to add an image that we're gonna texture paint on. So I'm gonna go over uh, right here, and I'll click on new, and I'm gonna set this to maybe uh, the width and height, maybe to 2500. That'll be a, probably a decent uh, resolution. And then I'll just set this color, the color that we're gonna start with to red. And then we'll just click okay. And now we have this image in Blender that we're gonna work with. And we can rename this to texture. If I can type, okay, texture. And then we're gonna go to the shading right here. And uh, on this object, we're gonna click new. We're gonna call this uh, material mushroom. And then we need to add the uh, image that we just made or that texture onto the principled shader. So we'll press shift A, we'll search for image, we'll drop the image in right there, and then we'll just drop the color onto the base color. And then we're gonna select that texture, that red mushroom texture that we made. And so now the texture is on the model. So now we can actually start texture painting. So let's just go back to the texture panel. And now I'm gonna jump over to my drawing tablet. All right, so here I am on my drawing tablet and I've got my pen and everything and uh, the screen tablet is just right in front of me. And so uh, what I'm going to do is go over here and just kind of look down because we're gonna be texture painting just below this right here. And I'm just gonna make sure that we have uh, this selected right here. This is the draw brush. And then I need to select a color. So I'll just go down right here. And right here, you can select a color. I'm gonna select just as kind of a tan color for the bottom of the mushroom, something like that. And then I'll press F to make the size of our brush smaller. And I'm gonna start painting. So I'll paint and you can see there's settings up here. There's strength and radius of the brush. So I'll just paint, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna paint this entire bottom area uh, tan colored. Now, if you look up here and you see, if you see this, that's because we UV unwrapped it all from the top through the bottom. So it's kind of using the same, it's using the same part of the texture on the bottom as it is on the top, but we're gonna be fixing that. So just don't worry about this top area. I'm just gonna keep on sculpting, or not sculpting. I'm just gonna keep on painting the bottom and just don't worry about the top because we're, we're going to fix that. So I'm just gonna paint 
this whole area kind of that tan color. And then right here on the edge, I'm gonna start to make it kind of fade out. I'm using less pressure on the pen just to make it so it kind of fades out a little bit more. Uh, if you wanna just change the strength down, you can do that too. If you're using a mouse, then you can just change the strength down. But I'm just gonna press more slightly on it. Um, so here we go. And then just to smooth that out a little bit more, I'm gonna uh, use a red color and just very lightly, I'll turn the strength way down and just very lightly kind of go, that's actually too hard, just very lightly go along here and just make it a little bit more red because I want a very smooth transition from the red to the tan color. And I'll smooth this out even more so I'll uh, go back to a tan color You can also use the uh, smear brush and the soften brush if you want to. I think I'll try using the soften brush a bit. Just kind of soften that out a little bit. All right, there we go. So now that's nice and smooth on the edge there. And then something I want to do to just make it look even better is I'm going to add a kind of a darker tan in those creases. So I will just uh, go here to the draw and then I'll bring this down and I'll go to the color and just kind of make it kind of a dark brown color like that, and then I'll make my brush really small. And then I'll just go in here and in all the creases, I'll make this even darker, all these creases here, I'll just darken it. So I'll make it nice and dark in the creases, just like that. All right, there we go. So this is what I was going for. And now if you look on the top, you can see uh, it's just taken that same texture and put it on top. Uh, we're gonna fix that though. I know that was going to happen. So uh, let's just go and fix that. But I'm done texture painting now, so I'm gonna hop over to my main monitor. All right, I'm back on my main monitor now. And so I'm just gonna go right over here to the UV editing, just like this, click on this tab, and then I'll go to seven for top view and I will A, deselect everything, and then I'll press Z and just go down, and that'll bring us to the material preview, so we can kind of preview that texture. So I'll press seven for top view, and then I'll make sure I'm not in wireframe, I'm in solid, and I'll press B, and I'll just box select everything up here like this. And then, uh, as you can see, we've selected all the stuff on the top, but we haven't selected the stuff that's on the bottom. So now, over here on this, uh, these are the vertices over here on the texture. So I will just scale these down and just bring them over onto the red, onto the red area of the texture. And now you can see, look at that. So this is all red, but then over here we have this texture right here uh, of all that detail on the bottom of our mushroom. So uh, that looks actually really good. So I'll click back onto layout right here, and then I'll press Alt H to Alt uh, to unhide everything else. So um, I'm gonna press Z and move my mouse down to go into material preview. And now you can see that's looking really great. Uh, so I'm gonna press file and save. And then something else that you need to be very careful of is that you need to save this texture. Because if you don't save it, if you just close Blender, it'll lose that and you'll have to uh, re-texture paint it. So I'm gonna go back to the texture painting. And then right here from paint, I'm gonna to go to view and then I'll press shift alt S to save the image. And I'm just gonna save this as texture.png and just save it somewhere on your computer. Click on save as image. You can see my face is in the way, but it's right there. So click save as image right down there. And then I'll just move my face back. Wee. Okay. And uh, now uh, let's uh, go back into layout. And next thing we're going to do is add our world, so our world lighting. So let's click right here, and we're going to click on this, this color right here. This is the world color, and we're going to click on environment texture, and then I'm going to click on open. In part one of this tutorial series, I talked about the HDRI I was going to use. I'm going to use this cave wall HDR from HDRI Haven. The link will be in the video description uh, if you want to use it, or you can use a different HDRI, uh, whichever one you like. So I'm going to just use this one. And I just downloaded the 1K version because you don't really need anything too much bigger. 
and it'll also uh, make your render times faster if it's a smaller image. So I'm going to add a camera now. So I'll press Shift A and add a camera, and then you can just move your view to wherever you want the camera to be. So I just want I want the camera to be kind of like this, and then I'll press Control Alt Zero, and then the camera will jump to wherever we uh, had our view. So I'll just uh, move this camera around a bit. So I'll press G and double tap Z, kind of pull it out a little bit. And I do want this to be a square image, so I'll click right here, and then I will hover my mouse over this resolution value, and I'll press Control C, and that'll copy the value. And then I'll hover my mouse over the Y value, which is the 1080, and I'll press Control V, and that will paste the value. So now I'm just going to press Control B uh, in the camera view and just box select the camera. And that way, when we go into rendered mode, you can see it's not rendering all this other stuff. It's only rendering what's inside. And then uh, the color management, I want to set that to filmic. Just make sure it's set to filmic. So just make sure that the view transform is set to filmic. And then the look, I'm going to use high contrast because that'll just make things look a little bit nicer. And we will do some color correction in the compositor, but that'll just make things look a little bit nicer. And uh, let's go back into material preview and we can add materials for these other objects. So this object, I'm just going to bring it up a bit and I'm going to go right here to the shading and I will click new. And then I'm going to call this like mushroom stem and uh, these two things right here. I don't really want to use these. So I'll just uh, click right here, drag out and then drag back and let go and then do the same thing for here. So click, drag out, drag back, and let go, just because I don't need to use them. And I'll press zero to go into the camera view. And then I'm going to make the base color kind of a little bit of a kind of creamy, kind of a yellowy color, just something like that. Sort of similar to the tan color, maybe a little bit brighter though. And then I'm going to add some subsurf because subsurf will make it feel a little bit more flushy and nice. So I'll just change, I'll change this subsurface color to kind of a reddy, tanny, orangey kind of color. And then the subsurface, I'll just change this to 0.1. And if we go into rendered mode, you can see uh, it uh, looks a lot more flushy and more like a mushroom. I'll click on this one, this mushroom here, and I'm going to uh, add some subsurface on this too. So I'll change the subsurf to 0.1. And then I'll also change the subsurface here just to kind of a, a tan, kind of a red, maybe an orangey kind of color just like that. Okay, and then you can see here's our texture that we've added. If we get rid of that, you can see it doesn't have the texture. But if we drop this in here, it's now got that texture that we painted. So now I'm going to do the ground texture. So I'm going to click on this ground right here, click new, and I'm just going to call it dirt, just like that. And then in part one, I talked about the texture I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this burned ground texture from HDRI Haven. The link will be in the video description. And I just downloaded the 2K version just because I don't think we really need much more uh, detail than that. Uh, and then uh, something I'm going to use is I'm going to use the Node Wrangler. So the Node Wrangler is a super cool add-on. It's built into Blender. If you don't have it, you can just go to Edit, Preferences, and then in the add-ons, you can just start typing in Node Wrangler, and you can see that. So you can just add that, and then if you want to just uh, have it be in all your Blender files, you can just click on Save Preferences, and then the Node Wrangler will be in all of your Blender files. So to use the Node Wrangler, there's a few things. The Node Wrangler has a lot of different uh, uses, but one thing that the Node Wrangler can do is it can automatically add textures into your material. So to do that, I'll just click on the principal shader, and then I'll press Control shift t and Control shift t will bring up this file browser, and then you can just find the texture that you want to use. So I'll just uh, go to the folder that I want, and then I will uh, just select all the textures that I want to use. So I want to use the diffuse, the normal, and the roughness. And then I'll click uh, right here. Let me just move my face. Principal texture setup. So just click on that. And what it does, you can see, is it automatically adds in all of these materials. Now, the displacement, I'm not going to use that. If you want to, you can, but I'm not going to. So I'll just click on this and press X to delete it, and then click on the displacement and just delete it with X. Uh, I'm just going to save my project again. So I'll click File, Save. And you can see it's automatically added in the texture. So that's really great. But uh, we haven't UV unwrapped this yet, so you can't really see the texture. What I'm going to use is an easy texturing method that I like to use. Uh, it's super easy and really cool for like dirt textures, rock textures, different things like that. So the object coordinate node, I'm just going to plug the object into the vector right here. And then what I'm going to do is all of these textures, I'm going to change the flat 
to box, and then the blend will be 0.2. And so what that's kind of doing, uh, from what I know, is it's taking all the textures, it's kind of making a box around the object, and then taking all the textures and kind of uh, putting it on the mesh. So I'll do that again. So box, and then the blend is 0.2. And for like random textures, like dirt textures and stuff, this is uh, really great. So I'll go box, and then 0.2. So you have to do that with all the textures because the textures have to be aligned to themselves. Like the normal actually has to bump where, you know, the color is on the base color. So just do that on all of them. And then you can see right here, it looks really nice. Uh, if you want to change the scale of this, go to the mapping, click on the scale right here and then drag down. And then you can just drag these values and then you can just make it to any scale you want. So I'm just going to do something like, uh, that. So I like that. So I'll press zero to go back into the camera view. And uh, now we can kind of set up our scene a little bit more. So I'll go back into layout right here, and then I'll just go into camera mode and just scale this down, double tap R, just kind of rotate the stem around a bit, just that it's kind of pointing away. And then I'll click on this, bring it down, scale it down a little bit, and just move it around a little bit right here. And then also you can see uh, the origin point of this uh, mesh is all the way down here. So if you want to fix that, you can go to object, set origin, and then origin to geometry. And then we can just rotate this and scale this a little bit. And I might scale this stem, make it a little bit thicker. And then just uh, bring this right there. Just going to set up the scene however you like. I think I'm going to make it so it's rotating down a bit more, just like that. And then something else that I forgot to model in part one is the little white dots on top of the mushroom. So I'll just do that right now. So I'll press shift a and click on mesh and go to circle. And then I will move this circle over here, scale it up. I'll tab into edit mode and then just make sure you're in vertex select by clicking on one. And then I'm going to press F to just fill that face. And then I'll press I just scale it down a bit and then press I again. And that way, uh, when this is placed on top of the mushroom, it can kind of just be curved around. So I'll tap into object mode. I'll go right here to the modifiers, click on add modifier, and I'm going to add the shrink wrap modifier. So I'm going to shrink wrap this object on to the mushroom. So I'll click right here on the target and just select the object. And now you can see it's shrink wrapping onto it. I do want to give it thickness though. So I'll click on add modifier and I'll add a solidify modifier. And then I'll just change the thickness up just like that. Just give it a little bit of thickness. And then I'll press control two to add a subdivision surface and I'll go object and shade smooth. So now if I tap into edit mode and just kind of rotate this around, you can see it shrink wrapping onto the object. So I can just uh, do whatever I want and just put uh, a bunch of little white dots on to the mushroom. So I can just rotate this, scale it and just uh, put it wherever I want and keep on pressing shift D to duplicate these vertices and uh, just move it around wherever you want. If you want to reselect one of these and move it again, you can just hover your mouse over, press L and then it will select all the linked vertices. So it'll select all the connected ones and just move this around wherever you want. And if this is happening, if the red is showing through, you just need to change the thickness of the solidify modifier. So just add a little bit more thickness to that. And then I'll make a little one. So I'll just scale this down a bit. All right. So I like how that's looking. Uh, just uh, make it however you want. And then we're going to add two more mushrooms in this scene. Now these mushrooms are going to stay the same. And so to keep the scene very optimized, I'm going to, instead of shifting them, I'm going to alt D these objects. So I'll just click on these three objects and then I'll press alt D. And what alt D will do is it'll duplicate just like shift D, but it'll keep the same data of the mushroom. So it'll make uh, render times faster and the scene won't be as big. So I'll just scale this down and it'll just, uh, just optimize the scene a bit. And so now I'll just rotate this, just move it where I want. Um, I think I might want this stem to be a little bit thicker. So I'll tab into edit mode, go into wireframe, and then I can just bring this down. So just select these, move it down a bit. Okay, that looks better. I like that the mushrooms, the stems of the mushrooms are a bit thicker now. So I'll just kind of rotate this around a bit. And if your viewport is lagging a little bit, you can uh, hide the uh, subdivision surfaces. So if you want, you can just click on this and it'll hide that. 
and then it'll still be rendered because you have this. So this is telling it that it's going to display the subdivision surface in the render. This is it's displaying it in the views. So if your viewport is lagging a little bit, you can just click on these like right here. You can also click on this one right here and it'll just uh, hide that, but it'll still be rendered. Okay. And then I'll alt D this one more time and just make a mushroom kind of in the front here and just put this last mushroom just right here. Maybe scale it down a little bit. I think I'm going to move this larger mushroom over a little bit. So I'll just shift select on all these and just kind of move it over a little bit. Uh, something like that. Okay. So I like that. I do want to move the camera in a little bit. So I'll click on the camera, press G and double tap Z and just uh, bring in the camera a little bit. Just kind of center it into the scene. Uh, I can even rotate it, maybe move it over a little bit. And I like how that's looking now. So now we can add in our grass blades, uh, but we do need to add materials to our grass blade. So I'll just click on the grass blade, go to shading, click on new, and I'm going to call it grass. Now for the grass, I'm going to make the principled be a kind of a dark green color. And then I'm also going to turn down the roughness a little bit, and then I'll press shift a, I'll add a mix shader, and I'm going to mix this with a translucency. So a translucency will make it so that when there's light shining through it, it'll kind of brighten it up and a little, it'll let a little bit of light go through it. So uh, I'll type in translucent and I'll grab the translucent BSDF and then I'll just click on that and I'll make the translucent color be uh, a very light green, slightly yellow. And then if I go into rendered mode, you can see it's kind of letting some light through and just looking pretty nice. I'll turn the factor a little bit more towards the translucent. So that's that way. And then maybe I'll make this a little bit darker green, just like that. Now we can just grab this material right here and just drop it on all the other grass. So just bring this over and drop it on all the other grass materials. And now we have a uh, green grass for all our grasses. So let's select all these grasses and move them over. And now we can just kind of place them wherever we want in the scene. So I'll just move these around and just uh, make it look nice. Just find a good composition. I'll maybe have a grass coming up like this. Just kind of stick it in the ground. I'll go to layout because we don't need to be in the shading tab and just move the grass around. Just put it wherever we want, wherever you think looks nice. All right, so I've set up the grass blades pretty much how I want. I've just kind of put some different grass blades around. I do want to add another one right over here. So I'll shift D this one and I'm double tapping R. So I'm double tapping R and because we set the origin point down here, it's just rotating it. And then you can also scale it and do whatever you want and shift D them just to duplicate them. So I'll just move this one over here, kind of make it maybe coming off like this. And I like how that looks. Maybe I'll just scale these. Some of these are a little big. I want to make them a bit smaller, just like that. All right. So uh, I'll press, uh, I'll press file and save, or just click shift S and then I'll just go into rendered mode. Just see how that looks. So that's looking pretty cool. We do need to add um, some lights. So I will uh, press shift a, add a plane. I'll just uh, rotate this plane. So I'll move it over and then I'll press R Y 90, just kind of bring it like this. I'll press S and Z and scale it up just so that it's kind of a, like a strip of light. I'll just scale it up, move it over, and then I'll just move it kind of onto the side right here. And then I will click right here on the materials. I'll add a new material. I'll make it an emission, and then I will make it a slightly blue color. So I'll just be giving it a little bit of cool colors, kind of make it a little bit brighter and a little bit larger. So I'll turn up the brightness right here maybe kind of rotate it. You can double tap R and rotate it a bit. And I want to make it so it's kind of going down onto the mushrooms. So I'll just bring it up and just turn up the brightness to however you like. And we also need to add a material to these dots right here. So let's just click new and then I will just make the base color fully white. And then I'll turn the subsurface to a slight tan color and then turn the subsurface to like a 0.5 and that'll just make it a little bit nicer. And then I'll turn the roughness down a little bit. And also right here on these mushrooms right here, I do want to turn the roughness just a little bit down because I want them to be a little bit shiny, just kind of make them look like maybe they're a little bit wet or something. And I'll just make this color slightly more blue. Just want kind of want to give it a nice cool color. And then I do want to add another light back here for kind of like a rim light. So I'll press shift D duplicate this light, scale it down a bit and double tap R just kind of move it over. Uh, so it's behind the mushrooms just like this, just move it so that it's behind the mushrooms like that. 
and then that'll kind of add a rim light. You can see it's adding this nice light, kind of bumping it out of the background, uh, just like this. And then I do want to add one more, so I'll shift D, move it up, and then just kind of rotate it a bit like this. So now that's giving us a nice rim light kind of on the back here where it's a bit darker. And maybe I'll scale these down a little bit because they are a little bit bright. So I'll just scale them down a little bit, uh, just like that. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, one thing that I do want to do, which is super important, is add a depth of field. So I will just click right here and that'll set the 3D cursor just wherever I want. So I'm just going to do it right there. I'll push Shift A and I'll add an empty. And then I will click on my camera and then I will go to depth of field, click on depth of field, and then you can just click here and start typing in empty and then click on the empty. And then if you go to the material preview, you can change the F stop uh, so that it's uh, blurred out. So I'll just go into rendered mode actually and just see what I want. So this is 0.1. Uh, so now we're ready to set up the final render. So I'll just go file, save again, and I'll just go over uh, to the sampling. I'm gonna set the sampling to 200. And then the light paths here, I'll set the total to two, diffuse to two, transparency we don't have any transparency transmission we do have a little bit in the, that grass blade so i'm just going to set that to two and then everything else like the volume uh and the reflective and refractive caustics we don't need that so we can just turn that off and that'll speed up render times a little bit and then uh, if you have a gpu you can use that or just use your cpu if you don't have a gpu and go file save one more thing before I start rendering, if you do want to change the background, uh, if you want to rotate the background a little bit, uh, you can do that. So what you do is go into the shading tab, go into rendered mode so you can see the background. And then right here at object, we're going to click on world. And then using the node wrangler add-on, which I talked about earlier, you can click on the cave wall, press control T, and that'll add uh, these nodes. And then on the rotation Z, you can just rotate this around and this will just change where the world is so i do like it like this because there's a lot of bright light coming down here and then over here you can see it kind of gets some dark green so i'm just gonna rotate it pretty much like this but you can rotate it around if you want and then i'll pr press f12 to render all right so it finished rendering i think this version actually looks pretty good so uh now we're just going to do some final compositing just to really make the image look really nice so let's go to the compositor and i'll just click on use nodes and then I'll just move this over. I'll press Shift A and add an alpha over. And then uh, we're gonna add a vignette and that'll just kind of darken the edge of the image. So I'll press Shift A, add a box mask. And I'll just bring the box mask right down here. I'll just plug it into the factor right here. And then using the Node Wrangler add-on, we're gonna Shift, Control, and click on this box mask right here. I'll press V to zoom this image out. And then I'll just change the box mask I'll just change these values right here so that it's the there's white most of the image, but then there's black on a little bit of it. I'll just press V again, just kind of move this out so you can kind of see it right here, and then just move it just something like that, maybe move it a little bit smaller. And then right here, I'll press Shift A, add a blur node, drop the blur node right in here. Oh, wrong one. Shift A, blur and just drop this into the factor and then drop the blur in between that. I'll just control shift and click on the blur and then I'll change this maybe to 200. And then right here, I'll just move this one down here. So where the render layers is plugged into, I'll have it plugged into the bottom one. And then this image right here, I'm gonna change to black. And then I'll just control shift click on the alpha over node and you can see here's our image and it's adding this nice vignette effect so this darkening effect on the edges and if you don't want it to be super dark i can just press shift a search for a color ramp drop the color ramp right in here in between the blur and the alpha over and then the black color on the alpha over i'll just change it to gray and that way the vignette won't be as dark it'll just be a little bit brighter you can see now you can see all the edges it's just darker and so that looks pretty nice if you want to add the vignette uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, before I add the denoise node, I'm going to do a little bit of color correction. So I'll press Shift A. I'll search for RGB curves and just drop the RGB curves right here. I'll Control Shift click on the RGB curves. And then I can just play around with the colors and just make it look a little bit nicer. So I think I'll just bring this up a little bit and then bring this down a little bit, kind of give it some contrast. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the blue and just give it a little bit more of a blue color, just cause I kinda like that. And then I do wanna give it more green cause I want it to feel pretty uh, earthy and pretty like a forest. So I'm gonna give it a bit more of a green color. Maybe I'll actually move, remove a little bit of the blue. Let me just try that and see how that looks. That's basically it. Uh, so now I'll add the denoise node. So I'll search for the denoise node and then I'll drop the denoise node right in between uh, the image and the alpha over. And this will smooth out the image and make it look really nice. Okay, so there you can see it, uh, and this is pretty much done. So I will go over to the rendering tab right here, and actually you can see this is our texture that we painted. I'll click right here and click on viewer node. And then to save this image, I'll press uh, shift control, or shift alt S to save the image final render.png. So I'll just save that image. And now you can just go to your file browser and just grab the final render. And so here it is, the final uh, mushroom render. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you do follow this tutorial and you post your render online, leave a link in the video description so that I can see it. I'd love to see what you guys make. I hope this tutorial was fun and helpful, and I'll see you in a future tutorial.